Hello, welcome back to another video. My name's Nathan and we're going to do another POV today, but with something a little bit different. This is my Canon G7X Mark II, little pocket size camera, and I generally use it for I sort of my vlogging. When I'm using this camera to shoot with and I need to talk to camera, I will use this camera, but I also use it for my B-roll. It is very, very good at that. And I'm often asked, do we need the big, expensive, chunky photographer cameras to take good photos, to take good videos? And generally, I would say yes. You know, if you want to turn up on a shoot and you want to be taken seriously, you want a camera which people expect you to have. But this particular camera right here is actually not too bad. So with the specs, if you have a little bit of a read, it does have a one point type sensor, a bright f 1.8 to 1.2 Canon lens, and a superior Digitch 7 processor. So this pocket size, large sensor, compact camera is good for creative with both stills and HD video. It is classed as a point and shoot camera, quite simply, because it is a mirrorless and it is designed for you to sort of take it out, shoot it and walk away. But if you can't afford the big camera straight away, is this a type of camera that you can sort of start off your photographer journey? Let's go and find out. So let's uh, let's head into London and give this guy a go, shall we? Hi guys, welcome back to London. So I am out here with the Canon G7X Mark II, this nice little nifty sort of like pocket cam. Now, as I said before, I generally use this as my sort of vlogging camera. I sort of stick on a tripod and I sort of walk around talking to it. Now, it's not the best for that type of thing because there's no sort of mic slots to put a mic in. So you've only got the mic at the top. So sometimes the sound isn't that good. But as I said before as well, I've never actually taken photographs of this. So it's gonna be quite interesting to see what we can get out of it today. Now, it does have a 1.8 aperture and it's got a 4.2 zoom lens on it as well so it should have a nice sort of like vocal depth and vocal length and stuff so we should be able to get some really nice shots overall and of course it is a canon so they should be half decent we're currently on fleet street now my plan was to go down to trafalgar square actually take some nice shots around there around the fountains but it looks like there's a live concert going on so i'll take a little walk around here first there's a nice alleyway that i know of that looks pretty sweet that I've seen pictures of before. So I might go a little look there and then might take a walk around the Fleet Street area and the Strand. So I'm on the Strand, not Fleet Street, it's a little bit further down that way, isn't it? So, uh, so yeah, so bear with me and we'll see what we can get going. So it's really tiny little alleyway just here, look. So we're gonna have a see if, what we can do here. Like the vocal length of this thing is unbelievable, really. So we're gonna sort of zoom in just as we can. Take that into account. I've got on F 2.8. Got that fella just walking down the center of it as well. So you can give it a nice clear, clear frames. So you've got this little car park alleyway here as well. So you can see if we can get like a car just got coming through a little bit. Bring the Slowly. Right, can get that guy in focus. Yeah, we did. That's pretty good. I like that one. That's pretty good. I like that. Excellent. All right, let's uh, let's walk through here. I we'll have a little look. What's going on down by the river? So as we're walking down to the river, there's this wonderful street just down here, which sort of leads down to Embankment Station. I'm going to try to get quite central of this, but I don't know if you can see on the camera, but the fact that how close I am to this actual bridge just up here, I can get the whole thing in, and the majority of the street as well, when I'm sort of like at the deepest and widest range. So we're going to try to get like a nice top shot just up here. It might be able to crop in a little bit. Let's come a little bit closer in, shall we? And we can zoom quite close into it, actually. Try and not get somebody so close to the foreground. So I'm at F.2 still. Yep, it's all right. 
So we're going to walk down here now towards the river and see if we can get some nice shots in and around the river. Well, not obviously in the river, that's just silly really, isn't it? But I think you know what I mean, right? We've got this awesome staircase just up here. So I'm going to try to get this leading line up here. Let's focus on the banister itself. It's reasonably good. Now I know there's this awesome little passageway just down here. Mm -hmm. Let's look. This is pretty sweet. Right, so this is actually quite dark. So we need to probably bring the ISO up to about 400. Bring the f-stop down as much as it will go. And let's bring the shutter speed up slightly to one, one, two, five. There we are. And we'll zoom out a little bit so we get most of it in. So weird on the cat on the hands because it's so small. It almost feels like I'm not carrying anything. Get all that in there. We go. So let's get the background as much as we can and focus like that. That's pretty sick. That's pretty good. Get from this side. Nah, it's not as good this side. But I like these stairs at the end. These stairs at the end are pretty sweet. So I might go all the way to the end. I will say that the autofocus on this is a little bit touchy. Like it seems to sort of like try to take over for you and sort of imagine what you want to be in focus. But these stairs, I've taken photographs of these stairs before and they're so good. Shall we? And I was no little bit of glare from the sun just above it. And the old tile pub in the background. But yeah, it's such a such a difference as you can imagine to my Canon 80D, just be walking around with this. But not many people are taking that much attention of me. Usually when you've got like a larger camera, people are more aware of what you're doing. They sort of stop, they get out of the way, or they sort of ask what you're doing. With this, on the other hand, you're sort of okay to sort of run and gun really. So let these people walk away. Put the phone down, focus on the pub sign. You won't believe how actually close I am to the subjects. Like I'm zooming quite close in to get all this. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna take a left here and head down to the river, as I've said before, a couple of times. But because it is a sensational sunny day, the contrast in lights and shadow is very good because those street lamps as well give it such a nice little bit of character I don't know if I'm gonna be lucky enough to get this it's quite busy today so let's have a look it's not brilliant I'm gonna bring my shutter speed up quite a fair bit I reckon so I'm just on the other side of the bridge I want to see if I can get shot of these lights just going off across the top along the side here. I'm going to stop up a little bit. Bring the ISO up. Nice. Okay, let's have a look at this. Might be good. I'm going to come across the road as well. I'm going to have a feel like an upshot of these people on the stairs and the stairs itself. Bring the let's stop boy down to 1.8. ISO all the way down. A little bit of Sun glare coming up from the top. Not like a lot, I guess. Well, that's nifty. That might be a little bit blown out, that one, but if it does come out quite nice, that'll be interesting. So, uh, so yeah, so let's, let's move on, shall we? Dude, trying not to get hit by a car, that'll be nice, Nathan. Waterloo Bridge, Waterloo Bridge looks very nice. Well, I'm gonna try to get some of the city, sort of the skyline coming across here with 
Waterloo Bridge in the foreground. I'm gonna take a quick, I'm gonna take this quick shot because this is as far back as zoomed it is, and you can sort of see where I am here. But let's let me just show you an example of just how wide this lens is. So that's straight out of camera, that lens there. I've tweaked it a little bit to make it look better, but that is literally how wide this camera can sort of shoot. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna get Get that dirty pile on out of the way, I reckon. Just in between that like that. See if we can get most of the buildings in. There we go, nice, there we are. So that's 1 over 2000 f4.5 ISO 125. Shot this guy saw this bike out look. So the shutter button is so sensitive. It's so sensitive, like if you sort of squeeze that a little bit, you're taking a shot. So I've probably taken around about seven shots in the last 10 minutes that I didn't mean to take, mainly because the shutter is so sensitive. Just like that. I don't know how long exposure is gonna work on this. I might see if I can find a nice space where I could do like a nice long exposure. Weather like this isn't best for long exposure. It is actually quite, um, it's quite bright. But what I have actually found on here that it's got a ND filter built in. So I've just sort of pressed that there, look. I don't know if you can see it on the screen. But if I turn it on, it darkens a little bit so I can reduce the shutter speed. Which is pretty nifty, I guess. So yeah, I might give that a crack at some point in the video. So we've walked all the way down to uh, Blackfriars Bridge and you've got the old pillars of the old Blackfriars Bridge which is obviously next to the new one. So you've got a nice little sort of frame so if you get yourself sort of quite central into these two here, zoom them quite nicely. If I get those end ones quite forwards and we're just going to take a nice little shot. There we go. Nice little one. We're going to walk further down the river. I've been walking for about 10-20 minutes down the riverside already. It's a lot of construction and stuff going on, so I've not been able to get quite close to the river until about now. So, uh, walking up to the Millennium Bridge, the Whibby Wobbly Bridge is what it's usually called. And I might see if I can get a bit of a light exposure when I get a bit closer to it, see just how good this actually is with light exposures. Bit of an experiment. Might turn out good, might turn out really rubbish. Who knows? Right, so I wasn't wasting any of your time and dribbling on. I've been given a bit of a play with the light exposure settings on here. So even though the built-in ND filter does reduce the light sensitivity a fraction, just a little bit, it's not quite enough. So for me to bring it all the way down to, where is it? So like, even up to like half a second exposure, doesn't really sort of do much really. So then I'm gonna take a quick little shot here, but I'm gonna put a two second timer on so I don't need to touch the camera. And I'm gonna give it a go and see what I can sort of do in post. Cause it is very blown out. I can barely see anything apart from the bridge and the buildings. So maybe I can do something with the sort of edit cause I'm shooting the raw. So hopefully a lot of the information might still be there. If it does work, I'll whack it up on camera now on screen, but what I will do while I'm here is that I will actually take a nice shot because this is actually quite a nice little frame. So I'm going to bring the shutter all the way up to about 120. I'm going to bring the f-stop down. So I had the f-stop all the way up to f11, which seemed to do quite well. The sky is slightly blown out, but again, I can see I can bring down the highlights a little bit in that one. And the ISO, it goes down to 125. So even with the f-stop quite high, it still wasn't doing its best to sort of like sort of help with the light sensitivity. So obviously, yeah, it's, it's not great for daytime because obviously you can't put your own filter in front of the camera. So if you've got your own ND filter, it doesn't sort of work out that way. So, uh, so yeah, so if you if we want to call this a sort of review, which it isn't, definitely not a review of this camera. See, um, long exposure shots in the daytime 
are difficult anyway, but of course you can buy your own ND filters to sort of try to help that out. But it's not a camera to try to take long exposure shots in the day, even with the built-in ND filter. But we're gonna keep walking a little bit further up now. And I suppose it's rude not to for me to take a photograph of St. Paul's while I'm here up this nice little sort of like staircase just up here. So I'm going to take off the, uh, the mini tripod. I'm going to use this staircase sort of like leading line to St. Paul's up at the very top. Might come up a little bit further. And I've just literally posted an Instagram post today saying I might need to have a little bit of therapy in not taking photographs of this building. And here I am taking photos of this building. But here we go, just like dead center, the best I can anyway. I wait for these people to move so we get a nice little clean frame. Yeah, awesome. And that's when my action cam sort of stopped working, the battery ran out. So yeah, that was uh, that was quite productive. I took some really, really nice photographs with it. I was extremely surprised just how wide the sort of, the, the, the lens actually was. It did sort of take my breath away. Like it really felt like, even though I was quite close to what I was taking a photograph of, because I could really zoom right out. I could take in the whole entire scene, which I sort of demonstrated within the video. The pictures have come out very, very well. Of course, they were slightly bit of a lower grade to what I would expect with my Canon 80D, but you know, with a little bit of twigging in Lightroom, they have all come out really, really well. And these are the type of pictures that I am proud to be posting on my Instagram. So in the long short, is it a good enough camera to point and shoot and to start you out on your photographer journey if you cannot afford one of the big branded type of photography cameras? Then yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely without a doubt. You can get one of these for anything between 300 to 500 pounds, depending if you're gonna buy it brand new or secondhand or refurbished or anything like that. So it is a good sort of bargain type camera to start you off with to sort of like get yourself a feel with the sort of type of photography that you want to do, and then maybe progress to one of these nice, pretty little cameras when you sort of say you're a photographer, people expect you to have. So, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed it, it would mean so much if you would hit the thumbs up button just down there. It really does help the channel out. And if you haven't already, and you've seen my face many, many times, it would mean so much to me if you would in fact subscribe to the channel. But until next time, I will see you in the next video. Bye.